Hey everyone, Weston Ackermore from Real Vision in Tokyo. So this is a somewhat uncommon potential opportunity to see what a Fedless global cross-asset market reaction to two of the largest and most influential DM central banks do uh, or not do. So we're um, about to head into central bank policy announcements coming Thursday, July 21st. Um, that would be the Bank of Japan followed by the ECB. What is for once not in the picture, which is the Fed, um, which has July FOMC next week. And so therefore, the, F the Fed is in its quiet period. And uh, this is significant, particularly for the euro and the yen, which have been getting hammered year to date. Uh, because so many people out there, you know, view these currencies and many other currencies strictly from the lens of the dollar. But note that although the euro may be taking a beating and hovering at parity versus the dollar, the euro uh, versus yen cross rate has been significantly up on the year. So the euro is down about 10% against the dollar, but it's up about 10% against the yen year to date. Um, and that reflects the 20% move um, in dollar yen cross rate. So on BOJ and the ECB going in, so the general expectations are for the Bank of Japan to remain unchanged in policy and for the ECB to finally deliver its first rate hike, though with huge uncertainty attached to it. Uh, markets are basically pricing in like 50-50 chance of 50 base points, 75 base points for uh, ECB rate hike. Um, and as such, ECB is you know far more in focus of the two. So I'm keeping a close eye on EURJPY, Euro Yen, the dollarless major cross rate. But I also want to show a series of charts covering global cross asset markets in relation. Okay, so this is just the Euro versus the Yen, EURJPY, and the Euro versus the dollar, EURUSD. And note that they had previously been highly correlated in percent for percent lockstep movements. But at some point, they suddenly blew apart directionally and headed in you know opposite directions. That point was March 7th of this year, as marked by this yellow line. March 7th of this year was a significant date in markets. Okay, and here's what I'm about to show you. So we're talking uh, on a global multi-asset markets uh, scale beyond just FX, but particularly futures markets, okay, for various um, and more or less fundamentally unrelated underliers, which all simultaneously blew up on March 7th. So prior to March 7th of this year, Euro USD or Euro futures uh, sold off sharply, but then abruptly reversed right on March 7th uh, before resuming, you know, a choppy downside to date. But if you see yen futures from before and after March 7th, you'll see that March 7th marked the start of an abrupt one directional sell off. And that is reflective of dollar yen up 20% uh, since then as the yen is now the worst currency versus the dollar uh, year to date, besides obviously the Turkish lira. Okay, so March 7th, that's a significance uh, from an FX point of view. Let's take a look at bonds. As we know, dollar yen and uh, the 10 year US Treasury yields basically move very, very closely together. And so when you see a sudden drop in the yen on March 7th, that coincides with a sudden drop in 10 year US Treasury futures also abruptly and sharply selling off also one directionally. In other words, March 7th is when 10 year US Treasury yields really began to surge. And why should you care? Well, that's the risk free rate for all assets. And that's why you should care. Okay, so on to equities. Equities are not just the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. Okay, so from a global DM equity perspective, March 7th was the bottom for the Nikkei 225 index in Japan. Um, it also marked a sharp pivot point for Euro stocks, uh, SX5E index. Temporary as it was, it was nonetheless a very sharp and significant pivot point. So uh, the Euro stocks index basically was down 20% from the start of 20, 2022 uh, until March 7th. 
and then from March 7th until that end of that month in a very sh short period of time, there's a 16% rally in Euro stocks. Um, and for what reason? There was no actual fundamental reason for that. Okay, and then finally on to commodities. So March 7th saw a blow off top in several different commodities futures of different commodities underliers, okay? So here we have WTI crude oil. This is clearly a blow off top and pullback, um, as well as gold futures, as well as copper futures, and again, many others as well. Now note that March 7th was also uh, day two of LME Nickel Day, the London Metal Exchange, um, and their horrendous mishandling of uh, this huge nickel short squeeze that was underway. Okay, and look, you could discuss each of these commodities, uh, you know, and, and the fundamentals of each one all you want to, and I'm not saying that those are illegitimate discussions by any means. I'm just pointing out facts and observations of what happened in price action with markets. Okay, so to bring it back to the euro and the yen, um, and of course the euro-yen cross rate in and of itself, it may very well be that these don't reflect fundamentals at all. And instead, they're more so just uh, reflecting momentum flows triggered by a cross asset futures, you know, forced deleveraging uh, from March 7th that occurred. That could very well be a, ma a major part of price action from that point. So, should the ECB actually and finally hike rates, then that would be the first time fundamentally that there is actually divergence uh, happening from the Bank of Japan policy, which is going to be on hold likely. And so if that happens, fundamentally in the real world of this policy divergence, to what degree is that priced in? Is it 100% priced in? Is it not at all priced in? Um, but I would seriously doubt that it leans towards the 100% priced in part, given the charts that I just showed you. Either way, I'll be watching Euro Yen uh, alongside everything else. That said, I just want to warn people, just don't be too short term, like as an intraday minute for minute, tick for tick short term um, with watching markets and then attributing, you know, any and all intraday movements to like one major thing or another, right? Like one week implied volatility on the Euro and the Yen are both extremely high right now. So what that means is that there's just a, a ton of not just uncertainty, of the price direction of the markets, but there's a lot of mispositioning in either direction. And that may need to flush out. Um, and as it does so, that those movements might have absolutely nothing to do um, with some word for word following of central bank press conferences. Okay. And I also just want to note with that in mind, what the schedule timeline for the next uh, day or so is. So we have BOJ up first, Policy is usually released around noon, uh, which again, expected uh, unchanged, but Governor Kuroda's press conference is at 3.30 p.m. Japan time, which means that from the BOJ policy release time until Japan cash close at 3 p.m., okay, so from about noon to uh, 3 p.m. cash close in Japan, that is a market that's operating on a fraction of the info. And so any market price action during that time period, it should not at all be read deeply into, if at all. Then at 3.30 p.m. Japan, Kuroda starts his press conference and usually wraps up around 5. Uh, however, that time period, starting at, you know, around 3.30 p.m. Japan, 3.30 p.m. Japan is 7.30 a.m. London. That's when the major global FX traders come in for the day, and that's when they move markets. Okay, so there's that overlap happening as Kuroda is talking. And then add to that, you have this Nord Stream 1 gas pipeline from Russia that is currently down for scheduled maintenance and is, I guess, expected to reopen, but to what capacity, we shall see. But that reopen is roughly around that Japan PM, Europe AM overlap time, though I'm not sure exactly about the, the timing uh, of that particular event, but nonetheless, uh, 
you know, with European gas supply being a major key driver of the euro as of late, that's another factor that is also overlapping the Kyoto press conference and the London or the European um, FX traders coming in. And then in addition to that, you also have Mario Draghi and the Italian government currently in turmoil. So any developments on that can also move the euro. So it will be very, very difficult to discern what's moving what with regards to the euro or with regards to really, you know, global currencies uh, in general. Um, and then also keep in mind with the yen and with the BOJ, the BOJ uh, and the press conference may be on Thursday, but Friday, the day after, is when we get the latest Japan CPI data. So if Kuroda and the Bank of Japan is making policy in accordance to Japan CPI, then BOJ policy picture is not going to be uh, full until we see what that CPI is, which is going to be the following day after the BOJ. Um, but either way, this is a critical day because it is a Fedless day. Um, in fact, it's critical because it's a Fedless day. Okay, so just keep all this in mind as you watch or as you trade markets uh, into the end of the week. Um, and I will also follow up uh, as these developments occur. All right, thanks a lot. See you next time.